Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody. This is Tony of Comic Conversations, the podcast that reviews more comics than anybody else. You can check out my show at halfguard.com. On today's Single Issue Monday, I'm going to be covering Peter Parker, the Spectacular Spider-Man, Issue 64. I bet a lot of you are wondering, what an, what an odd choice of book to cover. I mean, of all the Spider-Man stories to be covering, why are you covering this particular Peter Parker, the Spectacular Spider-Man 64? It's because it's the comic book debut of Cloak and Dagger. All right, with that out of the way, let's go into Peter Parker, The Spectacular Spider-Man 64. Book opens up with Spider-Man swinging through New York City. As Spider-Man thinks to himself how quiet it is, a scream for help can be heard. He corrects himself. It was a quiet night. The cries are coming from behind a pigeon coop. It's a man. Relieved, the man thanks Spider-Man for showing up. Spider-Man says if he's asking for money, he's all tapped out. The man proclaims, they paid me off for a lifetime. The man admits he knew where the money was coming from, but he couldn't pass it up. Spider-Man asks, money for what? The man replies, drugs. Spider-Man tells him to slow down and start at the beginning. He used to be a pharmacist. Got into bad debt, but he found a way out. Certain people were performing experiments. He was told he'd be a very rich man if he continued procuring the drugs for it. But he didn't realize what the drugs were used for. The man offers to turn himself into the DA. If only he'll get them away from them. Spider-Man's spider sense is going berserk. A couple of superhero-looking individuals show up, calling themselves Cloak and Dagger. They say they're here for Simon Marshall and they're going to make him pay. They tell Spider-Man to not interfere. Spider-Man says he'd love nothing more, but if he doesn't do his good deed for the night, he'll get a nasty note from his dead mother, he jokes. This isn't a bullfight and you can't sidestep a guy with spider speed. Spider-Man finds himself in the abyss of Cloak's cape. He's freezing and notes there's enough space in there to lose a city block, and the darkness is muting his spider sense. Simon tries to get away, but is stopped by Dagger. Dagger threatens him with the powers he gave her to end his miserable life. Remorse means nothing to her. Daggers of light fly from her fingertips, passing through Simon Marshall's clothing and flesh into his bloodstream, causing a biophysical shock where there can be no defense. It's then that Spider-Man comes flying out of Cloak's cape. He knew if he flailed long enough, he'd connect with something, namely Cloak's chin. Spider-Man is shocked to find the man's lifeless body. He offered to turn himself into the DA, he says. Cloak and Dagger have accomplished their mission. Spider-Man examines Simon Marshall's body. His blood is frozen in his veins. He deserves no better. The punishment fits the crime, says Cloak and Dagger. Spider-Man says he came clean. Who made them judge, jury, and executioner? Even criminals have rights, Spider-Man says. Dagger's movements are quicker than Spider-Man's eyes. Dagger is now throwing her patented light daggers at Spider-Man. Luckily for Spider-Man, he has spider-like agility to avoid them, unlike Simon Marshall. Dagger is able to control the trajectory of her daggers as they follow Spider-Man wherever he goes. He's able to dodge a couple of them into aluminum water tower. Cloak gets the drop on Spider-Man long enough to allow a dagger to find its mark. Dagger's effect leaves Spider-Man in a death-like cold. Cloak and Dagger make the retreat. Cloak envelops the two of them, allowing them to vanish. As Spider-Man agonizes over the pain of Dagger's blades, the authorities make their way to the top of the building. The authorities attempt to arrest Spider-Man for the murder of Simon Marshall when they see Spider-Man in pain, denying the charges. There was an APB out for Simon Marshall's arrest, but now he's fries dried from the inside out. The authorities don't know what to make of the situation. Thrilled, they finally track down Marshall, but feel a missed opportunity to bring Spider-Man in. Spider-Man says give him a minute to take a powder as he collapses off the building. As the officers contemplate what happened to Spidey, we see him on a window pane, gravity his sides, hiding from the police. Spider-Man hobbles his way home between cars of a subway, collapsing once he gets home. The next afternoon, Peter Parker goes to the Bugle's chief researcher, Max Stanett, for information on Marshall. The police were keeping an eye on Marshall, who was a chemist for the mob, providing them with new experimental drugs no one had ever even heard of. He worked outside Ellis Island. When the police raided Marshall's lab, they found dozens of recently deceased teenagers. They were exposed to Marshall's new designer drugs. Peter asks who these kids were. Why did they take the drugs? Mac responds they were all runaways, all promised food, shelter, and clothing. Spider-Man tries to piece together Cloak and Dagger's relation to Marshall and the mob. Did they work for the mob, looking to shut him up before he blabbed to the authorities? At Ellis Island, Spider-Man wonders what it must have been like for all the immigrants making their way to New York. It's then that Spider-Man hears a scream. It's the remaining gangsters associated with the drug lab. 
Cloak and Dagger have rounded them all up, but for what? One of the gangsters as being tied up says, I was minding my own business running numbers down on Delancey Street when they took him. They ask the gangster if they don't recognize him, but Cloak and Dagger certainly know him by name. He says he's never seen them in his entire life. The rest of the gangsters tell him to drop the act. They know everything, their names and their hangouts. One of the gangsters tells Joey, they're the kids. Joey says it can't be, they're all dead. The gangster pleads with Cloak and Dagger. They ask to be let go, they'll turn themselves in. Dagger responds, do you remember what happened when we begged to be let go? You'll leave when we're done with you and not before. The mob were looking to make a brand new drug that would get all the kids hooked and the runaways would be their guinea pigs. Luckily, Cloak and Dagger were able to escape. The drug would have killed them before they were found. But something was different about Cloak and Dagger's chemistry. The drug did not kill them. It gave them superpowers. Spider-Man appears having heard the whole story. They should have been working together to bring them to justice. Cloak and Dagger don't want them to go to jail. They want them to pay for their sins with their lives. Spider-Man says that'll only make them criminals. Dagger tells Spider-Man to stay out of their business. As the two fight Spider-Man, one of the gangsters makes use of the shattered window that Spider-Man came in through. As they argue and fight with Spider-Man, the freed mobster nails Dagger with a board. The gangster threatens Cloak and Spider-Man with a piece of broken glass to Dagger's throat. The mobsters think they have their ticket out, but then Cloak disappears before Spider-Man can talk any sense into him. Cloak is able to swallow them all to his cloak. Not yet ready to give up, the man threatens to kill Dagger if Cloak doesn't knock it off. They'll distract him with a dead girlfriend. Spider-Man frees Dagger. As the gangsters try to make their way out of Cloak's cape, they find a light. They make a mad dash to it, hoping to get one over on Cloak. As they run towards the light, the light is a window lit by moonlight. The men fall out the window, falling five stories to the ground. Cloak and Dagger say their work is done. Cloak teleports the two of them and Spider-Man is left alone. Spider-Man is terrified. He'll certainly be sleeping with the lights on tonight. End of Peter Parker the Spectacular Spider-Man 64, Cloak and Dagger. Thanks again for checking out my video and don't be a stranger to check out my podcast, Comic Conversations, the podcast that reviews more comics than anybody else at Hefgari.com. All right, thanks again for checking me out on Single Issue Monday. And as always, catch you guys next time. Adios.